conflate two issues here. But Douglas Murray, you know, 95% of children in a particular area are of the Muslim faith. Uh, you were complaining in your article in The Spectator that in one primary school um, music was banned. That, that's kind of another issue. But raffles and tombolas were banned. I mean, what do you want to do? Do you want to encourage Muslim children to gamble? What's your problem with that? Should it, ref it should reflect the nature of the school. Yeah, so we first, they came for the tombolas. Um, for well, what, look, um, the, the problem that gambling going, going seems on wrong here, the, in the those problem, communities. The problem going on here is that we're in the middle of, of a debate. I mean, the nation is going through something very substantial change, and I think that what we've been discussing in recent days and what we've been discussing this morning kind of reflects this. Um, I mean, until very recently, you know, if you said to people, and it comes back to the British values thing as well, if you said to people until very recently, what is Britain, what are British values, you'd have got a fairly clear um, reply along the lines of, you know, a Protestant Christian country, we have institutions of church and state and monarchy and so on, which represent the country. As one of the results of mass immigration of recent decades, there has been a substantial change in the country. All sorts of good things have come from that and some negatives have. But one of the things that has come from it is this, uh, this confusion about what it is we are. We want to be open and tolerant, we want people to be able to practice their faiths, we want pe people to be able to express themselves and live the lives they want to live. What we're finding it very hard to do at the moment, and I mean the French secular example has already come up, is to work out where our lines are drawn as a nation, because they're not clear at the moment. It's we're impossible in the middle. to draw those lines, isn't it? It, it? it may prove impossible. It may be that we do something like the French state did and try to draw very clear lines. That's what you've heard in recent days, there's a bit of it already this morning, that you know, there's a problem with some schools that are actually you know, state secular schools that happen to have had... How bad are these um, problems? Uh, the problems exposed in, uh, in uh, Sir Michael Wilshaw's report are, are pretty serious and there's, there's more to come. Um, really? What's, about what's so teaching. serious in the report? I, I, think, I think, for instance, I mean, Wilshaw himself says that these children are at risk of cultural isolation. Uh, there have been findings of children, for instance, being taught in assembly, the chant anti-Christian chants and so on. This is, this is very unpleasant sectarian and stuff. Did you know that the, none would, of the kids were spoken to? But if I, if did, I, you know, uh, Douglas, if, did you know the, the none of the people in that school were spoken to during that so-called investigation? And, but, okay. and the, 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 the teachers were not speak or spoken to either. Isolation. You come to Stanford, did where I live, or, well, not far away from our house, we have a particular community, the Jewish community, who live in a very isolated way. Nobody says anything about them. I have no problem with that. Hold on. I have no problem with that. If that's what they want to do, that's their choice. But we don't create a big fuss over the Jewish communities, especially that particular community living in that way. Wait, wait, why, cause, why, why cause a fuss over a report that was made out of a hoax letter Hang as on, well as... You, are, you acknowledge there are issues. I, I did say Rabbi Lord. First of all, we're, you're talking about uh, faith schools. We're talking about state schools. Exactly. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing... There are many, there are many, on, the many of those schools me. are funded no, by the I'm state. not going to interrupt me. Stop. The second thing is what should be taught in schools. Actually, I think you should be teaching about religions. So that doesn't mean you have to believe. But if we don't know what other people believe, we won't know. The literacy to challenge the idea of what you mentioned it, the, you used your language, of the true faith. It's not just so I would say there are faiths out there and Britain is about acknowledging truths of faith. And the third thing isn't, isn't, is about wait, what wait, we wait, tolerate. Wait. The third thing is about what we tolerate. I don't think that everything goes and I think that if there is incitement to hatred, to racial hatred, or gender hatred, or sex, about sexuality, actually you do restrict that. Okay, but Douglas Murray... <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, we've got a lot of time. <laughs> Douglas Murray, you can't force people to believe things. You can't no. shoehorn people into a particular Douglas Murray shaped. I have no intention David Cameron shaped Britishness. No. Can you? No, I mean, this is part of it. By the way, just, just very quickly, I mean, on, this, on this matter of this, I mean, I do think that one of the things... But that address this, that this, issue about... Okay, can I just mention first, one of the interesting things that's come up in recent days and weeks, I think, over this whole Trojan horse business, is I think that some Muslims in this country, particularly a lot of Muslim, a lot of Muslim spokespeople, a lot of Muslim groups have been furious about these revelations and are now denying them. They're still denying them. 
and this is something like happened in the Catholic Church over the paedophilia yeah. scandal. People just don't want to admit it. They don't want dirty laundry to be aired in public. They it's genuinely, wrong. they genuinely it's think that, wrong. and that's why there's, there's still this denial even now. The there's an official report by Sir Michael Wilshaw. It's found some very disturbing things. Some people still this, think that they don't exist. Is this the same Sir Michael Wilshaw and, who just did a U-turn on what Gov did or and, didn't and, tell and, him? But you, you know, Mary, Mary, the, the thing, I, either you think this has all been, do you think this has all been made up? Uh, well, I, I think do you think it's all been made up? What I actually know is that there are serious governance issues, there have been internal administrative issues, whether there are issues of extremism, which is what you're peddling, and what in fact the publication you work for is peddling by publishing one of the worst covers in this country that I have ever seen, oh, suggesting that just... young children are vehicles for um, extremism and Nikki. terrorism. You should be ashamed Nikki. to be yeah, can I, can I just, okay, can, I just, can I just give, this is a very good example of the problem. Miriam. You are I'm a sure you I are am. a very I prominent you are a very <laughs> prominent uh, spokesperson. You are a voice. You're a very prominent convert to Islam. You have a voice. I'm not, I don't call if, myself if, a convert. Okay, so don't well, right, call me whatever one. it is you you, want, you yeah. want to call yourself, you have a voice. Here are some problems that are coming up, which have been exposed in schools that seem to be teaching very seriously unpleasant things, and they're being taught by some extremist Muslims. Why, Extremist. in this debate, you first of all deny that that is going on, and secondly, I've think the problem is a spectator cover cartoon. I've I never denied that there are issues. I do not understand. On this the I've problem is not the spectator issues. cover. I think the Let's issue go, is you're Miriam trying first. to... Miriam first. I want to speak to Daniel Hannan. Yeah. Miriam, respond to that. You're, well, you're, you're trying to suggest what you're trying to do is support the, the go, Gove's agenda here, which is there are absolutely issues within these schools, and I think everyone, including the uh, Hands Off Birmingham school campaign and others, have acknowledged that there are certain people who should even stand down as a consequence of some of the revelations in this report and reports that will come. The issue, however, is trying to rebrand this as an, as an issue of extremism in order to expand this idea of extremism being non-violent ideas. or indeed Nick Griffin had been asked to come along and speak in a school. Neither of the equivalents of those two individuals were invited <laughs> to speak in these schools. Well, I'm sorry, Shady Al Suleiman no. is a man who's no, no, no. called... What? His views are worse than What are his views? Well, is anyone who supports Al-Qaeda in, in public, anyone who supports the ideology of Al-Qaeda... Who Al says he supports Al-Qaeda? Anyone who supports the uh, I'm not philosophy. defending him, but who well, says... Well, he's not being stoned to death. He shouldn't yeah, be invited yeah, to address... Well, are you saying it's not as bad as Gert Wilders and Nick Griffin? Wait, one at a time. I'm absolutely saying he shouldn't be invited to address You're saying he's not as bad as Gert Wilders or Nick Griffin? I'm saying you can't can't <clears throat> compare the people who are speaking in these schools. I don't know to about this Griffin. particular yes, speaker. Worse. Mary, let me finish my point, please. You, you can Any, finish your point, yeah, but I'm saying to you, you point. have to please allow people to speak point. in this country. Yeah, allow me to speak, Allow me to speak. Anyone who believes in stoning people to death, Nick Griffin has reprehensible views, but he doesn't believe that an adulteress should be stoned to death. Anyone who does should not be invited to a school. And nor should the Christian, by the way. Does that include Jewish rabbis? Wait, 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 should not be invited to speak at schools. That's a it's a it's a moot point. It's just not something we should even yes, be debating. Yes, it's a platitude. The fact, that we're, about that is, the fact that we're defensive about that is, is illustrative of the problem. I'll come to you with a question. Nobody, nobody's defensive about it. But, but, sorry, no, no, no. I, Daniel Hannan is next. Question. I want to bring it back. Peter Hitchens, thank you. I um, want to bring it back, and I think you both, with huge respect, yes. dealt with that particular issue. And, and we're going to park it for now. <laughs> Daniel Hannan. Yeah. Um, MEP, freedom. We saw, of course, in recent European elections, a certain swing in a certain way and a, and, a, and a huge discomfort across. So quite the interesting discussion there with uh, Douglas Murray and that uh, British uh, Muslim lady that was there and Majid Nawaz. And again, folks, it's just one of those questions in terms of who do you invite to speak to a school of young children? that might be different than who you allow to speak to maybe a college or university campus. You also have to take into account in terms of what is that speaker in the past? What is his narrative going on in terms of that? Of that by taking a look at his uh, words and speech in the past. If there are words, if there are, you know, sentiments in a speaker's narrative that you know, are absolutely hate-filled and 
you basically think that, you know, they do incite violence. They do have very racist and bigoted remarks. They're telling things to do against certain groups of people. Then I think everybody or an institution or a place has a right to say, you know what, we wouldn't, we don't want that person speaking. You're not literally denying him his free speech because nobody has a right to speak at an institution at a public institution, no one has a right to do that. You get invited or you get disinvited. Now, in this case here, where they were talking about the two different kinds of speakers, well, like you said, is one of them, Nick Jones, okay, he basically has some unbelievably racist and bigoted views. But the fact of the matter is, as Majid Nawaz says, he's not calling for the stoning of an adulterer or adulteress. Whereas the other person, that uh, speaker from ISIS or Al-Qaeda, has got some absolutely, you know, sentiments and stuff that we would absolutely not want to, you know, associate with at all. Let alone, okay, let young children hear those absolute, you know, Islamist type of views. And the other thing is, is that what the um, the uh, Jewish lady brought up, the... the uh, Rabbi, she was saying that the difference between state schools and private schools, secular schools, state schools, religious schools, if these are state secular schools, they should not be teaching anything remotely religious. Now, they could have, as she said, a world religions class that tries to talk about all the world's religions. But now you get into a situation of, okay, which really, how many, there's so many different religions. And then you know what? What's going to happen is, well, the atheists are going to come in and say, you know what? We demand we're a religion. We're of a non-God religion. Satanists are going to come in and say, we're a religion. We, our religion is to worship Satan. And so now you're teaching what? Judaism, Christianity, Satanism, atheism, agnosticism. Islam, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, I mean, Zoroastrianism. I mean, the list could go on and on and on. It just becomes in this day and age an absolute, you know, night, a nightmare. Not to mention the PR nightmare that goes along with it. So it may be best to concentrate on, or, you know, now people say, well, what about the world's greatest religions? Well, who's, who's going to name the greatest religions? So these types of things, when they're talking about in the school, especially to young children, kindergarten, elementary and whatever, and as long as it's state, secular schools, religion should be out of it. And these schools that were purported to have been, you know, chanting or telling their children about anti-Christian or anti-Jewish songs or what sentiments were being put inside there, that definitely needs to be investigated. Absolutely, 100%. And if that's being shown, there needs to be, okay, some serious consequences for those people. I mean, this should not be allowed regardless of who it's against, whether it's going against Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, atheism, agnosticism, anything like that. Why can't we just concentrate and tell these schools to just concentrate on, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, history, <laughs> mathematics, science, biology, those kind of things, and just teach it in a non-political way. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, like, share, and follow us if you found our content something that, um, you know, benefited you. Put your comments down below, share them with us. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our other videos here and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.